So welcome back friends. I received an email from a subscriber unpicked one who asked a very interesting question that I didn't have an answer to. And that was, will an ax chop through a logging chain? How this all came about was Unpicked was watching a movie, Cool Hand Luke. And in this movie, Cool Hand Luke, I think a Paul Newman character, was able to chop his ankle chains and free himself with an ax in three strokes. Today, we're gonna to put that to the test. For this test, we're gonna use some standard logging chain. I believe that this is 5 16 pretty heavy duty stuff. And the ax that we're gonna be using is, of course, a heavy duty chopping ax of the Basque design. I chose this one because it has a lot of weight to it and a big cutting area. So let's put it up on the block and see what happens. So our first chop, we're gonna use a big, this is about a six by eight dug fur piece of cribbing. And I'm just gonna go directly onto the wood and to see, this is a pretty heavy chain. I don't know if Paul Newman's chain was gonna be, it was quite this heavy, but we'll see what happens. I fear that it's gonna push it into the block. If that happens, we'll put, start putting some harder surfaces on there, but let's give a swing and, and find out. We'll glove up here. All right, let's see. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about this. That might be some Hollywood, but we'll see. Oh man, what happened there? So that was as hard as I could swing. We got aimed right there, hit right where I was aiming there, right across that link. And the problem is that the force of the ax pressed the chain down into the wood and there just wasn't enough backing there. <laughs> I really pushed it in there, but you can see, where do we strike right there? So we got through not very far, not very far at all, probably about 35, 35% through the chain. So let's put a little bit harder surface on there, a little chunk of plywood, and try it again and see what happens. All right, if we put a little piece of plywood across here, that, that's pretty hard. We're going across the grain rather than into it. And I'll get a new piece of chain here and hopefully hit it right there. See if that doesn't do it. Okay, we're gonna go right there for that one. Pretty small target here, hard as I can go. Oh, goodness. That is a lot of force, and that didn't work very well either. It just mashed it down into the plywood. Boy, I'd say if you were on a Florida chain gang and you had a block of wood to cut your leg shackles with, you might, uh, well, you might be there a while. There might be a better option. Okay, there we can see. So that right there actually cut through even less than the first one. That, I thought that that would have been harder than that. Well, there's only one thing left to do, and that's to put a really hard surface down, which is gonna be a little bit hard on the ax, but we can always fix that. All right, how about a piece of mild steel? What if we put a mild steel on there? That's certainly not gonna press through. This was the first strike, the second strike, the third one, we'll try to go right through there and to see if we can chop through that in one hit. Even against the wood, we can see we're getting a, certainly getting a little bit of damage on that ax, but still plenty of edge there. I don't think we're gonna have any, probably think it's definitely sharp enough. But let's see what happens here. You know what? I'm gonna put some safety glasses on. Here we go, hard as I can. What happened there? Oh goodness, look at that. That did indeed cut through that chain link. Look at that. It cut all the way through on one side and almost all the way through. On the other side, you can see the first two strikes here. It, well, it looks like maybe hit the same piece right there. But I wanna see if we, I would like to see if it's possible to cut through that chain in one strike. Let's try it again. Let me see if I can swing it even harder. Get that steel on there. We'll cut, try to cut through this one right here. It doesn't have any Nick's in it, right there. Let's see what we've got there. Yeah, again, look at that. That's a pretty amazing, that's a clean cut right through that, that deal, but it didn't cut all the way through. I'd like to see if we could get it one chop. If I hit it perfectly and hard enough, 
I bent our bar there a little bit hard enough. I think we could actually do it. You know, that's a lot of force there. A lot of force. Let's see. Let's try this piece right here. Okay, let's give it all we got. A one chop through a logging chain and a piece of steel. The white Dodge pickup, a lot of folks have been asking about that. If I got a new rig, it's not mine. It belongs to uh, a friend of mine who is one of the volunteers for the fire department. He's putting a new transmission in it. He doesn't have a shop to work in. So he's, that's why it's here. He's uh, just finishing up putting a new, new tranny in an exhaust system. So if you were wondering, okay, let's pull this tight. I really like to, would like to chop this. I'll try it one more time. And see if we can get all the way through it. Nice big heavy axe. Oh, we did it! <laughs> we did it. Let's take a look at that. So it, it is possible. It is definitely possible. It works. Sure enough. So I guess Paul Newman actually could have chopped his uh, chains off with an axe. There's the link you can see. There's the, certainly the two pieces. And that's good to know, I guess. I'm surprised. I didn't think, I didn't think you could chop through that with one hit. But boy, that ax sure put the, put the hurt on that flat bar. Let's take a look at the edge. I've been really impressed with these Basque axes. You know, a little bit of chipping right there. Nothing that can't be repaired actually quite easily. But that is very interesting. You know what I would really like to know is can you cut a big fat cable with an axe too? You know all those movies where they cut the cable? So here's an old logging choker uh, that's uh, pretty much uh, served its purpose of starting to fray and every time I grab it, it stabs me in the hand. I'll be glad to get rid of it. But I always watch, the, you see those old movies where they're uh, like a fishing boat or the old uh, uh, sailing ships or whatever they were. They're always, get the axe, you know, something. <laughs> something is dragging the ship down and they always have an ax at the ready and they cut through those gigantic cables on that. I don't know about that. This stuff is pretty tough, but let's try it and see. This is probably about a, maybe a five, it's probably a three eighths cable. So it's not a insignificant bit of cable, but let's put that up on here and see if that will indeed chop in one hit. Okay. 3 8 cable, hard as I can. How about that? Indeed, an axe will definitely cut a cable. It's multi strands there. It cut through all of them except for one little piece. So that's, uh, that's definitely a truth too. Yeah, that actually cuts pretty simple there. Huh, that's kind of interesting. So there we have it. I hope that answers your question, Unpicked. An ax will indeed cut through a logging chain in one stroke, as well as a stranded cable. So, well, that was fun. <laughs> I'll spend the next hour working the chips out of that ax. Uh, so just to, uh, to tell you guys what's been going on lately. So um, I haven't been putting up a lot of videos because as, as you know, I've been on uh, uh, two wildland fires and I'm, I guess I'm happy to report that I think wildland season is over for the year. Uh, it has been raining solid for two days. Um, I talked to the guys that are on the fire and they're pretty much pulling everything and wrapping up and everyone's under the uh, uh, pretty much in agreement that the season in this area at least is completely over. Just starting to get snow on the mountains. I think um, it looks like to the north there, Mount Fuji there is starting to get a fresh cap on it. And it's just incredible how uh, quickly the seasons change when we were just sweltering in the heat on that fire uh, to uh, back to tin pants and uh, warm clothes and long johns and getting ready for winter. So there's a, got a whole bunch of stuff uh, to share with you guys. We'll be finishing bringing in the firewood. Uh, we'll be doing some work with the firewood processor. Um, we got a whole bunch of stuff to get ready for winter. It's just today's, I, I don't want to get out there and do it because it's raining and it, it'll stop here in a few days and we'll get out there and get those last things finalized. We got a whole new load, a logging or log truck load of uh, some really great wood 
uh, that I'm splitting with a couple of the guys uh, at the volunteer fire department. We've got some nice lodge pole from the Warm Springs Indian Reservation that is uh, bone dry. So that lodge pole makes really wonderful firewood, smells great, and we'll be cutting that, uh, a bunch of that here pretty soon. Um, anything else to report? I'm really enjoying the poison oak uh, that I picked up from the fire. Uh, we, uh, I have it on my neck and covering about a third of my body, uh, and that's always a good time. If any of you guys have a, a recipe <laughs> to, to give me some relief from that, I would be all ears because it is absolutely miserable. If you've ever had it in this area, it, what it feels like these little, like little drops of acid um, wherever it is all over your body. And I knew it, you know, it happens to me every time the same way and I knew I was gonna get it. What, I, what we do is we have all those fire hoses and we drag them around through, through the forest and it's got that poison oak all over and that oil gets all that fire hose. And when we were doing a backhaul, we we're pulling all that hose and bringing it back in. When we were done with it, you know, we were throwing those big bundles up on our shoulder and I got it all over my neck and I don't know if it's spreading and I've got it on my legs and on my arms and it's just hateful. It's absolutely hateful. Uh, what else was there? Something else I wanted to share with you. Oh, the, the van, the welding. So I've got a welder coming. Uh, Brian, who, uh, you guys know Brian, he works for me a couple days a week. He's actually, uh, he's a pretty good TIG welder apparently. He hasn't done aluminum, but he's done a lot of steel and chromoly uh, doing bicycle frames. So we've got a, a Lincoln welder coming uh, that will be able to do TIG and I've never done it before. So we'll do some videos on that and kind of, I'll be curious to see how, uh, how well uh, me not ever being able to, not welding with TIG, uh, I, I can get up to speed on that. I've always been something I've always wanted to try. So we'll share that experience as well. Maybe uh, Brian can share a few tips with us that he's picked up. He seems to be pretty well checked out on it, but uh, I guess that's it. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video.